Story number one. In the morning, Dennis woke up with a pleasant feeling of lightness in his body. He hurried out of bed and went to the bathroom, where he was glad to wash his face and dry himself with a soft towel. Wrapping the towel around himself, he headed for the kitchen. There he found his mother-in-law sitting at the table with her foot on the leg, wearing a robe and smoking. A slightly cooled omelet and a cup of coffee were already on the table. His mother-in-law watched him with unusual tenderness as he ate his breakfast. We need to talk, she said solemnly. Dennis knew from experience that such a phrase usually didn't bode well, but he had nothing to object. I don't want to disturb your family, so I'll move out. He nodded silently in agreement. After a moment's silence, she added, You may have noticed that I like to be in control. Everyone has their own way of doing things, but when I take charge, it usually benefits everyone. Dennis nodded and felt a twinge of envy. What a person she is, able to boss everyone around, he thought. You lack experience, his mother-in-law sighed. Dennis looked at her in surprise. She quickly got up, shook off her robe, and went to change. While Dennis washed the dishes, his mother-in-law quickly got ready and went shopping. She returned with two small bags filled with various things. Dennis gallantly intercepted the bags in the hallway and unloaded them in the kitchen, following his mother-in-law's instructions on where to put each item. The bag contained alcohol, rum, and coke. Rum is rum, he thought. Nothing wrong with this case. After the hot street, the mother-in-law went through her closet and her things for a long time and then spent ages in the shower. Dennis fidgeted on the sofa in languid anticipation, wondering what would happen next. Finally, a noise came from the hallway. Well, Dennis, are you ready? His mother-in-law stood in the doorway, wearing only a wide black ribbon around her neck from her clothes, her face adorned with bright makeup. We're going to check you out now, she said in a promising tone. Run to the bedroom, I said. Dennis entered the bedroom, hearing the stern stomping of heels behind him. He stopped at the edge of the bed and turned to hug the woman, but she silently pushed him away and he sat up, looking down at her. It looked like today was going to be a holiday, especially since his wife was away for two weeks. Life with his mother-in-law took on new colors. The day passed like a fairy tale and Dennis fell asleep from exhaustion. When he woke up, it was already evening outside. I slept at least two hours, he thought, getting up and stretching. From the kitchen came the pleasant aroma of something roasting, which made his stomach rumble. Dennis headed into the living room, where his mother-in-law was sitting on the same couch reading a women's magazine. What a sleeper you are, my dear son-in-law, she said, putting the magazine aside. I didn't want to wake you up. You must have expended a lot of energy. Dennis hummed uncertainly in response. Why don't we enjoy a home-cooked dinner tonight? I've already made dinner. When they entered the kitchen, the mother-in-law was working at the stove, and Dennis was helping to set the table. Soon, two plates with fried potatoes, homemade cutlets, pickles, and other things appeared on the small kitchen table. Opening the refrigerator, the mother-in-law pulled a bottle of vodka out of the freezer, deciding it would go well with the appetizers. Dennis hesitated a bit looking at the bottle, but finally agreed. While he was setting the glasses down, the phone rang. It was his wife calling from the beach. Answering the phone, Dennis assured her that everything was fine and they weren't fighting. After a brief conversation about the weather and their whereabouts, Dennis' wife mentioned that she had an opportunity to extend their vacation for another week at the beach. Dennis silently watched his mother-in-law, who was standing next to him, having overheard the entire conversation. Okay, stay, but be sure to call me often and be careful out there, he instructed. Okay, take care, she replied, ending the conversation. Dennis tucked the phone away in his pocket, and his mother-in-law said, at least my daughter will be able to rest easy on the beach for a few more days. The mother-in-law suggested, sit down, eat. Everything is already cold. They sat down at the table, and Dennis quickly poured cold vodka into shot glasses. Well, to my mother-in-law, he suggested, raising a shot glass for a toast. Oh, don't embarrass me, the mother-in-law smiled, 
though it was obvious she appreciated the kind words. They drank, snacked, and proceeded with the meal. The conversation revolved around their daughter, and the mother-in-law shared amusing anecdotes from their lives, causing bursts of laughter. Dennis felt a prick of guilt. He sipped from his shot glass and, snacking on a crisp pickle, asked, I wonder how you've managed to live so well all these years, considering she's not your biological daughter. Her mother-in-law furrowed her eyebrows and set her shot glass on the table. How did you find out about this? She asked. Dennis looked confused. Did that old fool tell you, or did she blab it to you herself? There was silence in the room as Dennis pondered his answer. His mother-in-law sighed and gestured for another shot glass to be brought. He filled both shots, and they drank in silence. I've always dreamed of having children, the mother-in-law confessed. I sought medical help, but nothing helped. But I have a friend who used to work in an orphanage. She's the one who got me through it. Dennis breathed heavily as his mother-in-law continued her explanation. She told me that my wife was adopted and had her name changed when she was just a little girl. She had been raised in a strict orphanage where mores were not at all what was commonly believed. It was better not to know the details. She spoke quietly about her past. Then, with a sigh, my mother-in-law mentioned that she had become interested in my philandering husband. I felt that trouble was brewing in my womanly heart, and my suspicions were confirmed when I caught them together one day. I scolded them severely, ensuring that they would remember it for life or so I hope. My mother-in-law shook her head, signaling that she had broken off their meetings. But as fate would have it, he became infatuated again with a new young girl who ended up getting pregnant by him. He left me and my adopted daughter, and tears came to my mother-in-law's eyes. She cried hard. Dennis, overcome with emotion, dropped his fork and knelt down next to his mother-in-law, hugging her tightly. For a while, they sat in silence, comforting each other. Well, life goes on, my mother-in-law said, wiping away her tears and gesturing for us to sit back down at the table. We haven't finished eating or drinking the whole bottle yet. Come on, let's sit down and continue. And later, I'll put on my stockings and give you exactly what you've wanted since this morning. Story number two. Our relationship is strong and we communicate harmoniously with her parents. They are modest, diligent people with admirable qualities. We share household responsibilities. We try to help them as much as possible so as not to burden them. We are an ordinary young family. Recently, I have noticed that I am drawn to my mother-in-law. She is an attractive woman, 39 years old, with a well-built figure. However, after seeing her pictures, I only pondered this as fantasy. I am well aware that any inappropriate act on my part could jeopardize our relationship, turn us into enemies for life. Nevertheless, one day I found myself unable to resist the temptation. It was a normal winter day when my mother-in-law and I had the day off and my girlfriend and father-in-law were at work. I was sitting at my computer when I heard her voice from the kitchen. She asked me to go to the market and buy vegetables for a salad she was preparing. I quickly completed the task. When I returned home, I saw my mother-in-law mopping the floors. As she bent over, her ass caught my attention, igniting desire in me. However, I restrained myself and retired to my room to relieve the tension. This time, however, I decided to take action. I carefully put the bag of vegetables back in its place, then swiftly approached her from behind and gently took her buttocks. She let out a startled sigh, but not from discomfort, but from the surprise of my touch. My mother-in-law, breathing heavily, replied, I've been dreaming of you for a long time. I noticed a faint smile on her face as she continued, Why didn't you do it before? I didn't dare then. I don't dare now, but I can't hold back any longer. You were wise to take the initiative, my dear. Ever since Amy introduced us, I've been thinking about you. I assumed you weren't interested. Then she discarded the rag, turned to me, and kissed me like I'd never been kissed by anyone before. Let's not continue tonight. There will be plenty of time tomorrow. 
My husband will be home from work soon, so let's plan for tomorrow, okay? I agreed, feeling a little disappointed, and retired to my room to relieve myself. The next day, I looked forward to seeing what would happen next. It started as usual. I drove the girl to work, came home and sat down at the computer. I tried not to rush things so as not to scare her off. Moreover, the mother-in-law took the initiative in her own hands. At first, she moved around the house as if nothing had changed. After that, there was silence. After about ten minutes, the door to my room opened and my stunning mother-in-law, dressed in red lingerie, appeared before me. She looked at me as if she hadn't had intimacy with her husband in years. After clearing her things off the table, she sat down on it and gestured for me to join her. I did not give my wife as much joy as I gave my mother-in-law at that moment. My mother-in-law was in high spirits that day. Later that evening, when we were alone in the kitchen, she whispered that I could visit her whenever I wanted. From then on, there were few places in the house where my mother-in-law and I didn't have fun. Every morning when she goes to shower, she calls me to join her. One fine morning, when everyone had gone to work and my mother-in-law and I were home, she said she wanted to surprise me and pulled a pregnancy test out of her pocket. Story number three. My adored mother-in-law always showed me great tenderness. She would pinch me lightly or hug me tightly, telling me how adorable I was and that she could not resist a man like me. However, when I told my wife about it, she doubted my words and accused me of making up the story. Despite my attempts to convince her otherwise, my wife Sarah simply laughed at my arguments. She teasingly remarked that, from my stories, I seemed to have a knack for talking to women and charming them easily. Michael, stop overthinking things, she said. My mom just complimented you as a wonderful son-in-law and gave you a warm family hug. My wife grinned mischievously and headed into the kitchen to prepare dinner. I stood there wondering if I had exaggerated the situation. After all, it seemed unlikely that my mother-in-law would openly harass me. However, given that she had been living alone for a long time, it was possible that she couldn't help but be attracted to an attractive man, seeking attention for herself. Regardless, my mother-in-law remained a very attractive woman. While I was pondering, my spouse Sarah had already prepared dinner and called me over. I refrained from talking further on the subject as my wife would not have believed me anyway. A few weeks later, my wife announced that she was going on a business trip abroad and would be away for about two weeks. To keep me company and keep me from getting bored, her mother Anna would be helping me. She will do the cooking and cleaning. Before I could say anything or object, my wife hurried out of the house with her suitcase. As she left, she shouted to me not to miss me. Two days had passed since my wife had left. While I was at work, my mother-in-law arrived, cooked a meal, fed the three parrots, who chattered enthusiastically a skill she had passed on to them and left, leaving me alone in a cold bed. When I returned home Friday night, however, I found my mother-in-law in the kitchen cooking something delicious. Hello. My handsome boy, she exclaimed loudly, go take a shower, freshen up while I prepare the food. I thanked Anna and, feeling hungry, quickly headed for the shower. When I returned to the kitchen, my favorite hamburgers, fried potatoes, and seaweed salad were waiting for me. After I finished eating, my mother-in-law stood up and started massaging my shoulders, offering to give me a massage. Relax, son-in-law, she said. You work tirelessly from morning to night. You need to relax. My daughter is gone and you're all alone. It must be boring. I was stunned by this turn of events, but I didn't protest. I showered my mother-in-law with compliments on the delicious dinner and the fantastic massage. I was completely relaxed. I only came out of my relaxed state when my mother-in-law led me into the bedroom. And then it all started. Mother-in-law turned out to be cunning and patiently waited for an opportunity, and I was just grateful for her care. My wife was going on another week-long business trip, and every evening my mother-in-law took me from work. It was never boring. Finally, the day came when my wife returned from her business trip, and my mother-in-law and I, of course, 
went to meet her. Upon arrival, Sarah kissed me and then asked me if I had missed her. I smiled and replied that with a mother like hers, it was impossible to miss her. We laughed. And then my mother-in-law spoke up. Listen, my daughter, tomorrow I will take your husband away. I want him to accompany me to the beach so that I can sunbathe and swim in the warm sea. Okay, Mom, my wife replied. I would go with you too, but I have to work. At that moment, I felt relieved and happy to be going to the beach with my favorite mother-in-law. I love my wife dearly, but my mother-in-law is something else entirely. She attracts in a forbidden way, and the forbidden always beckons me. Sometimes thoughts come over me that this is all wrong, but my desires coupled with my mother-in-law, being so available, bring me back to reality. I don't want it to end. Her massages are heavenly, and of course you can imagine that she does a great job with other types of massages as well, not always using her hands. Story number four. Visiting my mother-in-law is always a delightful experience. The serene atmosphere created by the chirping birds, blooming flowers, and insects in the grass is truly indescribable. As I walk around the property, I can't help but notice my mother-in-law moving gracefully in her swimsuit. Eliana, as she is known, has a stunning physique, and the outfit she chooses perfectly complements her beauty. While her style of dressing may be unconventional, it certainly emphasizes her figure. However, I must admit that her presence can be distracting, preventing me from focusing on even the simplest of tasks. Nevertheless, watching her attempts to draw attention to herself is intriguing and amusing. Fortunately, I found solace in wearing comfortable shorts that alleviate most of my concerns. However, one quandary remains constantly watching Eliana. While her swimsuit may not be as noticeable when I'm sitting under a tree, she persistently manages to get my attention. One day, she leaned against the fence and inquired about my brooding mood. I made a joke, explaining that her very presence prevented me from doing other things. We laughed, and she felt satisfied that teased her son-in-law, a frank swimsuit. Mother-in-law began to complain that there is no one to help at home to make repairs. Her husband, my father-in-law is always somewhere on the road, then fishing, then with friends all day playing cards. But I think that the father-in-law has a young mistress, so with her, he spends all his free time, and the mother-in-law deceives that fishing with friends goes away, in general is not when he does not do the house. As the mother-in-law said, all hope is in you, son-in-law. You will help me in everything. Eliana herself knows that her husband goes out that he does not miss any girl he meets. Until the evening, the mother-in-law was tormented by the problem of her husband's absence and clearly decided to take some action. Several times, she started a conversation about her husband's infidelity, about his promiscuity towards women. I agreed, calling all men and my father-in-law, in particular fools, who only think how to cheat on his wife. And when in response to a call from my mother-in-law, with a proposal to come to my wife's house, I again referred to the busyness. That's when Eliana decided to take revenge. Terrible revenge. As soon as it got dark, my mother-in-law made a grand entrance, dressed up in her best outfit, and even put on lipstick. We sat by the pool, where I served her a martini and myself a beer. Our conversation started with construction problems, but soon turned to personal matters. She couldn't contain her anger over her husband's infidelity, expressing a desire to meet his mistresses and physically hurt them. Fortunately, alcohol was already pouring in rivers, and there was no way to go to the city the last bus had left hours ago. Eventually, the mother-in-law calmed down and decided to reciprocate her son-in-law's advances in order to take revenge on her husband. Simply put, she had long thought of cheating on him, but had not found a good reason until fate presented her with the opportunity. The moral dilemma was set aside and retribution followed. The next morning, the mother-in-law woke up satisfied as she had spent the night seeking revenge on her unfaithful husband with the help of her son-in-law.